Hello Forest Hills family, this is Teresa Edwards coming to you with Tuesday's Daily Spiritual Check-In. And I hope that you are feeling well today and just sensing that God is very near to you as you go through what's on your list and what is important for you to get accomplished um, on this beautiful Tuesday that we have together. As we gather, I'm thinking about a scripture that I encountered um, recently in a group, I was in a Zoom meeting and of course someone did a devotional at the beginning and they used the book of Romans chapter 12 and called it the second love chapter. Of course we know the love chapter we're usually referring to 1 Corinthians 13 and many of us are familiar with that and it is certainly helpful and beautiful but this person raised this scripture up and read it from the message and I have to say it's been on my mind and my heart ever since I heard it so we're going to take it a little bit at a time over the next few spiritual check-ins that we'll be sharing together you and I and I thought we would begin with verse 9 and 10 and this is from the message which is a modern translation so it might sound a little different than the Bible you normally read out of but it helps us open our ears to things that we've read many times so listen to this word love from the center of who you are don't fake it run for dear life from evil hold on for dear life to good be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Love from the center of who you are. That phrase has just stayed with me, taken up residence in me. What does this mean? What is Paul talking about as he writes um, this love manifest? And the interesting thing about this is it doesn't just describe love, it tells us how we are to live in love. Love from the center of who we are. Don't fake it. Now, we've all had moments where we had to fake it a little bit, but this call to love from the center of who we are, what does that mean? I believe it means that we're directed toward the idea of our heart our soul, the place where God resides in us. Our faith life flows from there as God pours into us. And I think that we are to live from that center place. Love from the center of who you are. Because when we are the people we're supposed to be, we represent God, we look Christ-like, and how important that is. So we're to love from the center of who we are. And this is not describing the feeling of love or being in love with love, with, which I think our culture is, but this is an action verb. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. So the first call is to get in touch with the center of who we are and to say, my love for others, for this world, uh, for God, it flows from this deep center and find locating that and staying in that place and allowing your life to come out of that place of love is so important. So Paul starts there, love from the center of who you are. And then he has to say, don't fake it because it is a, it is a temptation to fake it till we make it. And we say that and sometimes that's helpful. But when it comes to love, Paul's saying, don't fake it. You can't pretend with this stuff. You can't act your way out of it. You have to love from this deep place inside of you because you have been loved by God in a deep and life-changing way. And then it goes on to give some instruction. So what this is is practical advice on how we do this thing called love, loving from the center of who we are. Paul writes, run for dear life from evil, hold on for dear life to good. I was reading another translation of this and it used the word loathe evil, L-O-A-T-H-E, which is an even stronger word than hate. Loathe evil, 
move away from evil. When we recognize something that is evil, we need to step away from it. And we need to move toward what is good. This is the action that love takes. Be good friends who love deeply. To me, this is so beautiful. Um, it is not a shallow love, a convenient love, but friendship and the love that is shared there runs deeply. And we are willing to do what is needed, what is necessary. We are designed to think about others. How can I serve, help, be a friend out of this deep place of love? And then to act on that for that is what love is. And lastly, practice playing second fiddle. Now we don't like this one. I can say for myself, I don't like this one because I like to be first. I like to get the best choice of whatever it is, seats or pieces of pizza or whatever. We, we like to be first. Um, we've kind of been taught in our culture, you're number one. And Paul's saying here, practice playing second fiddle, which means you have to do it a lot to say, put someone else first, because that is an act of love that will make a difference in their life. So I leave you with these words, and I hope that you'll hold them the way that I have been holding them, and that they'll direct your thoughts, your actions, and your heart in this day, in the days to come. Love from the center of who you are. Blessings.